is a stratosphere. From above the troposphere, it's a cloudless thin air without dust and vapor. We saw already the dust particles will be present only till the troposphere. Only till troposphere. So above the troposphere, we will not have dust particles and the vapor also will be very less. We saw the water vapor and carbon dioxide is present only till 90 kilometers. Only till 90 kilometers. Okay. The temperature in this layer remains constant for some distance, then rises due to the presence of ozone. Presence of ozone. What is ozone? Ozone is the layer present in the stratosphere which protects us from harmful radiation of the sun. So the ozone layer stops this harmful radiation from entering into the Earth's atmosphere. From entering into the Earth's atmosphere. So this radiation is this ozone is present in stratosphere. It stops the harmful ultraviolet radiation into the Earth's atmosphere because this ozone will absorb that and it will not enter the harmful ultraviolet radiation to enter into the Earth's atmosphere. And the stratosphere is almost free from clouds and associated weather phenomena. So that means it is very clear. So because of this, aeroplanes can, it is very idle for the aeroplanes to fly. So aeroplanes fly in this stratosphere. Aeroplanes fly in this stratosphere. So, ozone is present in stratosphere, aeroplanes fly in stratosphere. Okay. Next comes here. Okay, here you can see. First, we have the troposphere. The troposphere average height is 13 kilometers. After that, we have stratosphere. So, this ozone layer is present in stratosphere. So, after the stratosphere, we will have the mesosphere, and after this, we have the thermosphere. Okay. So all the flights will be flying in the stratosphere itself. Next is the mesosphere. So mesosphere is the next layer. After the stratosphere, we have mesosphere. So the mesosphere is an intermediate layer extending beyond the ozone layer. It's an intermediate layer extending beyond the ozone layer and continues up to an altitude of 80 kilometers from the Earth's surface. 80 kilometers from the Earth's surface. The temperature gradually falls to minus 100 degrees at 80 kilometers altitude. When the height increases, the temperature decreases. This is the basic phenomena on Earth. Generally, if you go to any hill station, you will find it very cold. Why? Because compared to sea level, let's say this is sea level, the hill stations are at a very great height because they are on hills. They are at a very great height. Okay. So that is the reason when we go up, the temperature reduces. So that is the reason the areas, that is the areas of what you call it. Hill stations. These hill stations are less cool. They have less temperatures. So this phenomenon of rising temperature, or sorry, of falling temperature as the height increases will be followed till mesosphere. Beyond the mesosphere, the temperature increases. Why? Because more sunlight comes and there is no atmosphere. So what will happen when there is no atmosphere? There is nothing to absorb the incoming radiation of the sun. So temperature rises beyond mesosphere. Because as you know, carbon dioxide and water vapor, I'll write this H2O, they are present only till 90 kilometers from the surface of the earth. We know both carbon dioxide and water vapor, they will absorb the incoming heat. So there is a chance of temperature reducing, but beyond that, temperature will not reduce. The upper layer of mesosphere is mesopause. We saw upper layer of troposphere is tropopause. Now upper layer of mesosphere is mesopause. Okay. So here you can see in this image, troposphere is there, is there up to with an average height of 13 kilometers. Then we have the stratosphere up till 30 to 40 kilometers. After that, we have mesosphere up to 70 to 80 kilometers. Beyond that, we have the thermosphere. Okay. Next comes thermosphere. In thermosphere, temperature rises very rapidly with increasing height. We have seen already. Up till mesosphere, we will have carbon dioxide and water vapor and they will absorb the heat. So the temperature does not rise as much as that of the thermosphere. In thermosphere, temperature rises very, very rapidly. In thermosphere, it is also called an ionosphere. Why? Because there are various ions because the sun radiation is coming in and there are different charged particles that exist. 
So because of the existence of different charged particles in that area, it is also known as ionosphere because it contains electrically charged particles called ions, which make short wave radio transmission possible over long distances. Short wave radio transmission possible over long distances and it extends between 80 to 400 kilometers. Okay. So the radio transmission of signals is possible only because of this ionosphere, which is there in the thermosphere region. Also meteors burn in this region, thereby increasing the, increasing the temperature much to a much higher state. Okay. This is about the thermosphere. Next, after th so here you can see in this image, so most of the satellites we will have, you know, just beyond the mesosphere, okay, in thermosphere only. So beyond thermosphere, we have the exosphere. So most, so here you can see in this image, the International Space Station is there in the thermosphere only. The auroras, the auroras that will be taking place in thermosphere only. Water auroras, that's a you know, different lecture that we will study in different lecture. So basically, they are the lights, different lightings which we will see in the poles because of these charged particles. Okay, I'll just explain you briefly. So when the rays are coming, there are charged particles there. So when the rays strike these charged particles, we will be seeing, you know, different glows, you know, glowing of light in, in different colors and all. That is called aurora. That will be seen only near the poles. Okay. So, you know, most of the satellites will be there in this thermosphere. Below this, we have mesosphere, stratosphere and thermosphere. In the stratosphere, most of the flights pass. Okay. In the stratosphere, most of the flights will pass. And also ozone layer is present in the stratosphere. And one more thing we have discussed, the temperature decreases till mesosphere. Remember this. So beyond mesosphere, that means in thermosphere and exosphere, temperature increases with height. So beyond mesosphere, temperature increases with height. Okay. Also the meteors burn in this, mesos this thermosphere because of high temperature. Okay. Next comes exosphere. This is the uppermost layer of the atmosphere extending beyond the ionosphere above a height of about 400 kilometers. This is the uppermost layer. The air is extremely rarefied and the temperature gradually increases through the layer. Temperature gradually increases because when you go up, what will happen? It is becoming close to the sun and there is no atmosphere. When there is no atmosphere and there is nothing to absorb the heat, what will happen? The air temperature increases. That is what is happening. Light gases like hydrogen, helium, float in the space from here. Okay, just a minute. Float in the space. So this layer is coincidence with the space. So space is nothing but the exosphere. Okay. So just we will re recap. We will revise what we have studied. We have seen what is atmosphere. First, we have seen what is weather. We have seen what is climate, where there is nothing but the day-to-day -day changes taking place around us. Next, we have seen what is climate. After that, we have seen what is atmosphere. And we have studied the different components of atmosphere like the water vapor, the gases and the dust particles. After that, we have seen the structure of atmosphere, that is the different layers of the atmosphere, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. We have seen that. Okay. Now, we will study another concept, the heat budget of the earth. We have seen the sun radiation will come into the earth. And some radiation goes back, some radiation gets trapped. So some radi so this has to be maintained. Let's say let's say 100 units of sun, 100 units of sun rays is coming. And only 90 is going back. If this happens daily, the heat gets accumulated in the earth. This should not happen. The earth temperature should be maintained. That means if 100 units of sun rays is coming into the earth, 100 units should go back. This is called heat budget. The earth receives a certain amount of insulation that is short waves and gives back long wave radiation into the space. So we will receive short wave radiation that is the earth receives short wave radiation and transmit the long wave radiation back. So it is reflecting the long wave radiation back into the space. Through this give and take or the heat budget, the earth maintains a constant temperature, maintains a constant temperature. I told you already the 100 units is 100 units is coming, 100 units is going back. What will happen here? The net does not change. The net doesn't change. So the net heat doesn't change. 
So what is happening because of this? The temperature is staying constant on the earth. Temperature is staying constant on the earth. This balance, if it gets disturbed, what will happen? You know, extreme climatic conditions takes place. So because we have seen, because of climate change, what is happening around us? Devastations are happening around us. You know, the ice caps, the glaciers are melting. This has a very serious impact on the earth. Okay? So this is what happens. The earth as a whole does not accumulate or lose heat. It maintains its temperature. This can happen only if insulation, that is the heat received, equal to terrestrial radiation, that is the heat released. So balance between these two is nothing but heat budget. So this is one of the reasons why Earth neither warms up nor cools down despite the huge transfer of heat that takes place. Despite the huge transfer of heat that takes place. Okay, This is the heat budget. We will understand this heat budget. So let's say 100 units of heat is coming. In coming radiation, 100 units is coming. So out of this 100 units, 45 units has been absorbed by the Earth. 45 units has been absorbed. 31 units is reflected from the atmosphere and the surface and scattered radiation is lost to the space. 3 units are absorbed by the ozone and 21 units are absorbed by directly by the atmosphere. So the total is 100. Out of 100, 45 is absorbed by the Earth. 31 is reflected from the atmosphere directly. 3 is absorbed by ozone and 21 units is 21 units absorbed by the atmosphere around us. Okay, this is 100 units. Now, the, how the 100 units is going back into the space, we will see. Okay, so 19 units out of the 45 units absorbed by the earth, 19 units is lost through latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization. That is, when water vapor is lost to the space, heat is lost. And late, through this latent heat of vaporization, 19 units is lost. Next, 4 units are absorbed by the atmosphere. Four, because 4 units is lost from the earth, it is absorbed by the atmosphere and that is reflected further back. And 22 units is lost through the long wave radiation. I told you already, earth absorbs short wave radiation, whereas it emits long wave radiation. It emits long wave radiation. And it is sent to the space. And also, 8 units of long wave radiation pass through uninhibited through the atmosphere. That means, here the 14, wave, 14 units of long wave radiation is passing through the atmosphere and atmosphere is further reflecting. But here, 8 units, what we are talking about, these 8 units are directly being lost into the space without getting affected by the atmosphere around us. So, total of the 61 units is lost to the space from the Earth. And along with the 61 units, this 8 units and the 31 units, which is directly being reflected, combined the earth is losing 100 units per day. So if it is getting 100 units, it is also losing 100 units directly or indirectly. Or you, can see. you can say anything. Because see, directly it will not reflect everything. Because the, we have gases in between, we have clouds in between, the clouds will be absorbing something, the clouds will also reflect something. So all this balance is being maintained by the nature itself. So if 100 units we are getting, 100 units we are losing. This is the basic concept. Okay, This is the heat budget. Next. Albedo. What is albedo? The reflected amount of radiation from the Earth's surface. Reflected amount of radiation. What is the reflected amount of radiation? So, when the sunrise is coming, I'll just explain. When the sunrise is coming, some rays are absorbed, some rays are reflected, some rays are refracted. Here you can see, sunrise is coming, some rays are absorbed, some are refracted, some are reflected. So this reflected amount of radiation is nothing but this reflected is nothing but albedo. How much a surface reflects is nothing but albedo. Okay. So this means you can understand that the value of albedo is different for different surfaces. The value of albedo is different for an ice. The value of albedo is different for water. So each and every surface has different albedo. Okay. So because of the effect of albedo, high developed areas such as urban cities can experience high average temperature than the surrounding suburban or rural areas and this phenomenon is called urban heat island. Urban heat island is this is the urban area, the surrounding are the rural areas. So all the rural areas will have different temperature whereas this urban area will have different temperature because they will be absorbing more heat. The reflected 
you know the, the reflected sun rays will be more in all the surrounding areas whereas in the urban areas what will happen more less less of the sun ray, less of the incoming radiation will be reflected and more will be absorbed so the temperature will be more because the albedo is different for different surfaces albedo is different for different surfaces because see a concrete has different albedo sand has different albedo so when more heat is reflected that means earth is not keeping heat that means the temperature will be less this is what is the concept here in urban heat islands more heat is been absorbed by these islands so the heat will be more because in the urban areas we have the, all the concrete and all which can absorb more heat okay so if you see the albedo snow has highest albedo remember snow has highest albedo clouds has the next highest after that comes sand grass crops and forest remember this snow clouds sand grass crops forest this is the sequence okay so we have seen atmosphere we have seen heat budget we have seen albedo okay now we will solve some questions we will solve some questions first question which of the following is not is correct descending order of permanent gases of the atmosphere descending order of the atmosphere gases so we have seen atmosphere gases nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide argon are present so what is its comp you know what is the descending order is been asked option a argon carbon dioxide neon helium option b carbon dioxide argon neon helium option c carbon dioxide argon helium neon option d argon carbon dioxide helium and neon so we know one thing for sure argon is greater than carbon dioxide you know this because the sequence is noa nitrogen oxygen argon okay after argon we have carbon dioxide this is also a well known fact for us after carbon dioxide we have neon after neon we have helium so the correct answer is option a argon carbon dioxide neon and helium so that is the reason i told you remember the composition is very important the second question which of the following is correct about water vapor correct about water vapor water vapor in the atmosphere increases with the altitude statement 2 water vapor decreases from equator towards the pole i told you this is a conceptual question these days upsc is asking more of these conceptual questions if this is the correct correct options option a one only option b two only option c both and option d none of the above the correct answer is option b two only because we have studied water vapor in the atmosphere increases with the altitude is wrong statement because the water vapor decreases with altitude why why because when the height increases the heat will be less when the heat is less the water vapor will be less that is the reason option the statement one is wrong but the statement two water vapor decreases from equator towards pole i told you already this is the equator it receives more heat so here the water vapor or the humidity will be more but near to the poles the heat will be less so less water will be evaporated so the water vapor will be very less so the statement 2 is correct answer so option b is the right answer okay next question which of the following is true about stratosphere statement 1 ozone layer is found in stratosphere statement 2 aeroplanes fly in the stratosphere so this is the correct option one only two only both and option d none and the correct answer is option c both i told you already ozone layer is found in the stratosphere the stratosphere is something you know which is above the troposphere the ozone layer is present in the stratosphere and aeroplanes fly in the stratosphere because the stratosphere is clear the stratosphere doesn't have much water vapor it will have water vapor and the gases but it will have the concentration is less also it does not have dust particles the clouds are not present in the stratosphere i told you already clouds are present in the troposphere itself so dust particles are not there in the stratosphere so it is very clear so aeroplanes can fly easily so option 1 and 2 are correct so option c is the correct answer okay so that's it for this lecture i'll see you again in the next lecture thank you